Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the TLDR of the space tech that you've been wanting to know about today. We are talking about the Starship SN15's upcoming rollout, the dates for that, and the possible cryo and static fire test dates that they have announced. We're also going to be talking about this little Raptor engine right here and Elon Musk's response to the tweet on it. We're also going to be talking about other SpaceX-related news and NASA's ingenuity. So if you want to know everything, be sure to stick the entire episode. Also, drop a like on the video to stay on the space side of the YouTube algorithm. But let's get into why you clicked on the video. So right here, we have this image coming from Starship Updates on Twitter. And this is a photo of what he tweeted as the RVAC, which is a Raptor engine spotted at the McGregor facility down in the Boca Chica area. This right here is the new and improved Raptor engine. And that comes from Elon Musk himself as he replied to that tweet saying that this is the new Raptor engine. As we talked about in the past previous episodes, SpaceX was working to fix their Raptor engines to make a much more clean, sleek version of those. As there was just so much going on, there were such convoluted pieces of equipment they needed to make something simpler to have less problems going on to make it so much more easy to work on and to swap and things like that. And so here we have it finally, the newer engines, which will be going on the SN15, hopefully, I would assume, as it's going to have a tremendous amount of upgrades and updates. So super excited to see that. And Elon Musk actually saying that, yes, this is the new engine we're looking for. Now, regarding the Starship SM15's upcoming rollout, Mary Boca Chica had tweeted about SpaceX's uh, road closures they have down the Boca Chica area. So Friday, April 9th, is going to be the soonest we will see the Starship roll to its pad. And I'm pretty confident that we will see it go on April 9th to the launch facility. On April 12th and April 13th, they also have road closures. So that could be for the cryo test and the static fire test. And I went on to their website right here on the Cameron County website to see if those dates are still there and they are so you guys let me know in the comments do you think they'll do it on those dates or do you think they'll have to push them back because we have seen many times SpaceX get road closures for these tests and they unfortunately have to close or they have to postpone for various reasons so let me know in the comments if you think they're going to do it on those dates or if we're gonna have to wait a little longer now Mary also tweeted a photo of this on Monday the GS1 tank and it finally went to its production site. The GS-1 tank is going to essentially be like a big fueling station, a fueling pod for future Starship. We thought on Monday, because we saw Tankzilla go to that area, which is used for transporting large objects, such as this GS-1 tank, we thought that that was actually going to be the SN-15's rollout to its launch pad, but it wasn't. It was for the GS-1 tank. And they also installed what are called thrust rammers, Ram thrusters, whatever you want to call them. Essentially, these are testing to see if the Starship can handle the mechanical load, the physical load of the thrust upon liftoff. And why are they doing that? Why haven't they done it before? Well, they did it previously, the older version of the Starship. They haven't done it recently because they haven't made any big changes to the Starships. But with SN15's major changes coming, they have to test before they actually do a launch if it can physically handle those loads. And so that's why I don't have an image of the thrusters, but I just want to give you guys an update that there is now more SpaceX news. As I was making this video, SpaceX, they lifted off another Falcon 9 from the Florida area to do more Starlinks to get those into orbit for the Starlink program. It was a successful launch from their facility. However, as I'm making this, it's still going to space. So I don't know if the booster successfully landed or not. We will talk about that in the next episode. I just wanted to give you guys an update that SpaceX did do a launch because as I was making this, I literally got an update from my phone that SpaceX was about to do a launch. So just to give you guys a little update on that. The last thing we're going to talk about, NASA's ingenuity, a little helicopter on Perseverance. This is the first image it sent back from Mars. This is right after Perseverance had dropped it onto the surface. And that confirms that it is active. It made it through the entire journey, and this thing is ready to go. And NASA actually wants to do a live stream of its flight on this upcoming week. So they want to target no earlier than April 11th for its actual flight attempt. And they hopefully want to stream this on Monday, April 12th on their NASA app, on YouTube, on Facebook, for everybody to stream. And I personally will watch that i want to see what this thing can do you guys let me know too like are you guys excited for this or you don't really care because i'm really excited to see this is the first time humans are going to try to fly something on another planet after landing it so this is i think this is really cool it's like a little rc helicopter on mars can't go wrong and that's all i got for you guys in today's episode if you enjoy this content if you want more be sure to drop a like subscribe to the channel you can always subscribe if you don't like the content and be sure to have a good one